Hello, and welcome to the next lesson in this free Windows Deployment Services training course for Windows Server 2012 and Windows Server 2012 R2. In the last lesson, I demonstrated how to configure Windows Deployment Services so that images can be deployed only to pre-staged computers, which is the most secure method of using Windows Deployment Services. Pre-staged computers, also called known computers, are essentially bare metal computers which have been approved by an administrator to download an image from the WDS server. By allowing only known client computers to download images, you are greatly increasing the security of your images. Pre-staging is commonly used by network administrators who do not want to risk their images falling into the wrong hands and being installed onto rogue computers. If you would like to learn more about pre-staging, see our last lesson. The aim of this lesson is to demonstrate how to deploy images to client computers that have not been pre-staged, so let's get started. Although it may sound appealing to configure Windows deployment services so that only known computers can download images, pre-staging does come with its own set of problems. Pre-staging requires significantly more input from the network administrator. First, the administrator must learn either the MAC address or GUID of every computer they'd like to pre-stage. Then, after discovering the MAC or GUID, the administrator must log on to the Windows Deployment Services console and add each of these computers, one at a time, to the list of Active Directory pre-stage devices. This was demonstrated in our last lesson. To put this into perspective, imagine that you have a thousand bare metal computers that require an operating system. Despite being very secure, pre-staging every single one of these computers could take quite some time. Fortunately, Windows Deployment Services makes it possible to deploy images to client computers without having to go to the trouble of pre-staging them first. Although this does make it more convenient to deploy images, it does come at a cost of weaker security. Client computers that have not been pre-staged are also referred to as unknown computers. There are two ways that an administrator can deploy images to unknown computers. The first method is very simple to implement, but is very insecure, and that is to allow every client computer on your network to download an image. With this approach, you can take any bare metal computer, whether it has been pre-staged or not, connect it to the network, perform a pixie boot, and download an image from the WDS server. This method is undoubtedly the easiest and most convenient way to deploy images. However, its simplicity makes it very insecure, and you do run the risk of your images falling into the wrong hands. For instance, there is nothing to stop a user from bringing in their own bare metal device from home, connecting it to the network, and installing one of your images. Remember, every installation of Windows you perform with Windows Deployment Services will require a license, and losing licenses to rogue computers is something that most network administrators would want to prevent. The second method is a more secure approach, however, it does require more input from the network administrator. This is called the auto-add policy. With the auto-add policy, known computers are able to perform a pixie boot and download an image from the WDS server without issue. However, when an unknown computer performs a pixie boot, the pixie boot will be paused and the computer will enter what is referred to as the pending state. Whilst in the pending state, a message will appear on screen instructing the user to contact the network administrator. At this point, the unknown computer will be added to a special list called the Pending Devices list in the Windows Deployment Services console. 
every unknown computer added to this list must either be approved or rejected by the network administrator. If the unknown computer is approved, the Pixie boot will continue and the image will be downloaded. If the unknown computer is rejected, the Pixie boot will fail and the computer will be denied an image. Now that we have covered all of the theory, I will now change over to my Windows Server 2012 R2 server with Windows Deployment Services installed to demonstrate how to deploy an image to an unknown computer. From the desktop of your Windows Server, first open Server Manager from the bottom left corner and select Tools from the top right corner. From the drop-down list, select Windows Deployment Services. This will open the Windows Deployment Services console. From the left pane, expand the Servers heading. This will display my WDS server, wds1.techtipsfromwill.co.uk. If I expand my WDS1 server, I am able to access the traditional Windows Deployment Services options. Notice from the list of options we have a setting named Pending Devices. If I select this option, notice that I have received a notification message in the main pane stating that this server is not configured to require administrator approval for unknown computers. I am receiving this message because in the last lesson I configured this server to allow only known computers to download an image. Because unknown computers are not currently permitted to download images, the pending devices screen is unavailable to us. To make this screen available, I need to modify the Pixie response settings for the WDS server. To do this, I will right click on my WDS1 server and select Properties from the drop-down list. This will open the Properties screen for the WDS server. From the options at the top, select the Pixie Response tab. If you recall from the last lesson, I selected the Respond Only to Known Client Computers radio button. Remember, when this option is selected, only computers that have been pre-staged are able to download an image. Unknown computers are essentially ignored and will never be allowed to download an image. To allow unknown computers to download images from the WDS server, I must, at a minimum, select the Respond to all client computers known and unknown radio button. If you select this option by itself, you are essentially saying that you are happy for every bare metal computer, known or unknown, to perform a Pixie boot and download an image. If you recall from our discussions earlier, this is a very insecure option, and only one that should be done if you are not worried about the security of your images. For added security, you should also consider selecting the Require Administrator Approval for Unknown Computers sub-option. When this checkbox is ticked, known computers are able to download images freely. Unknown computers, however, will be added to the pending devices list and will require an administrator to intervene and either approve or reject the installation. In order to access the Pending Devices option I showed you earlier in the Windows Deployment Services console, both of these options must be selected. Now that we have configured the appropriate Pixie Response options, I will next select the Boot tab. From here, I need to select which Pixie Boot policy I would like to use for all unknown computers. If you have seen our last lesson, these settings should look familiar to you. The Pixie Boot policy essentially determines what kind of interaction is required from the user, if any, in order to perform the Pixie Boot. By default, the Require the user to press the F12 key to continue the Pixie Boot option is selected. With this option, the user sat at the unknown computer 
will be prompted to press the F12 key to start the Pixie Boot. To eliminate the need for user interaction entirely, I can select the Always Continue the Pixie Boot option to perform the Pixie Boot automatically. I could also select the Continue the Pixie Boot unless the user presses the Escape key option to perform the Pixie Boot automatically unless the user opts out by pressing the Escape key. For now, I will stay with the default option of pressing the F12 key and will then click the OK button. Now that we have reconfigured our server, if I select the Pending Devices option on the left, you will now notice that we are no longer receiving the notification messages from earlier. From this point on, if an unknown computer is connected to our network and performs a Pixie Boot, that computer will appear listed on this screen. Once listed, an administrator is required to approve or reject the installation of the image. In a moment, I will demonstrate how this is done. One thing to keep in mind is that you are still able to pre-stage a client computer if you wish to do so, using the Active Directory pre-stage devices setting. Remember, pre-staged clients are able to install an image without administrator intervention, and will not appear listed in the pending devices screen. Before I demonstrate how to deploy an image to an unknown computer, the next step I would like to show you is how to create a customised message which will appear to all unknown computers whilst they are sat in the pending state. Although this step is optional, I personally like to do it. To create a customised message which will display to all unknown computers, first, open the command prompt. From the command prompt window, I will issue the command WDSUtil, which stands for Windows Deployment Services Utility. Next, I will add the switches Set Server and Auto Add Policy. Finally, I will add the Message switch. From here, I am able to enter a customised message which will appear to all unknown computers. For now, I will enter a customised message of This is an unknown computer. Contact your system administrator to install an image. When finished, press the Enter button. The command prompt will notify you that the command was successful. I will now close the command prompt and will change over to my bare metal client computer to demonstrate how to deploy an image to an unknown computer. When the bare metal computer is first switched on, it will perform a Pixie Boot. During the Pixie Boot, the client will contact a DHCP server on the network and will receive an IP address. After obtaining an IP address, the client computer is able to contact my WDS server, wds1.techtipsfromwill.co.uk. As per the Pixie Boot policy I selected earlier, notice that I am now being prompted to press the F12 key to continue the Pixie Boot. When I press the F12 key, notice that I have received a message stating that I should contact my system administrator and provide them with the details below. First, I am given a pending request ID of 1. Further down, I can see the message from the administrator that I configured earlier from the command prompt. This computer is now in the pending state that I mentioned earlier, and will require an administrator to approve the installation of the image. I will now change back to my Windows Server 2012 R2 server to demonstrate how to approve the image installation. From the Windows Deployment Services console, select the Pending Devices option from the left-hand pane. In the main pane, notice that we now have a device listed. This is the bare metal computer I was connected to a moment ago. If you look carefully, 
you will notice that the listed device has a request ID of 1, which tallies with the request ID that appeared on my client computer. Also notice that its current status is set to pending. If I right click on the pending device, you will notice that I have a few options. The approve option allows an unknown computer to proceed to download an image. The name and approve option will allow me to specify a computer account name for the unknown computer and choose a location for the account in Active Directory. The reject option denies the unknown computer an image and will cancel the Pixie Boot. To keep things simple for now, I will choose the Approve option. Once approved, a message will appear on screen stating that the pending device was approved successfully. If I click the OK button, you will notice that the status of the pending device has changed to Approved. Now that I have successfully approved the unknown computer, I will now change back to my client computer. Shortly after approving the device, the client computer will start to download the boot image from the WDS server. This can take a couple of minutes to complete. As with the previous lesson, once the boot image has been downloaded, you will have a working copy of Windows PE, from which you can set your desired language, keyboard and disk partitioning options in the same way you would have done if installing from the Windows DVD. This concludes this lesson on how to deploy images to unknown computers using Windows deployment services. I hope that you have enjoyed this lesson and found it useful. In the next lesson, I will start to look at some of the more advanced features of Windows deployment services. The focus of our next video will be on creating custom images, which are images that contain not only the Windows operating system, but also the latest Windows updates and applications you would otherwise have to install manually. If you'd like to see more Windows Server 2012 and Windows Server 2012 R2 training videos, please feel free to browse our YouTube channel. And don't forget to show your support for our videos by leaving your comments, thumbs up and by subscribing to our channel. Many thanks and we'll see you on the next lesson.